Like it's it's super incredible. Like he'll just come at you and pull his jersey up and like whoop, cat abs. Didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> <laughs> now I know what he's hunting. Uh, hey now, uh, the looking really for, funny thing for a cougar. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Oh, Welcome into show 63, boys and girls. Oh my God, All Star Weekend is finally over. Thank you. Guys. Welcome to the Pucknologist here on Teal Town USA. I'm your host, AJ Strong, and joining me tonight, today, this morning, this afternoon, whenever you're listening, we have Rocket Backhander. I am the sad sack of potatoes that you like to call your lover, but in real life, I'm just a voice on a microphone. Rocket Backhander, baby, how you doing? Hey. And also joining us, the 30th mascot from the NHL, oh, oh, oh hockey <laughs> jerk. Have you ever had your groin tear apart at the seams? You're probably wondering, is that my Tinder bio or is that Marty Havlat's life story? More at 11. <laughs> oh. See what happens when you have to get over the boards quickly. <laughs> see, what oh. happens when hockey, <laughs> see what happens when hockey jerk's not here? <laughs> hey, now. Hey, remember to subscribe to the cast on SoundCloud or your podcast platform of choice. If you're on iTunes, hey, do us a favor, throw us a little bit of love over there and subscribe to the YouTube channel to check out Teal Town After Dark, the only live and interactive postgame show on YouTube. And feel free to leave a comment for us on SoundCloud or YouTube. We will do our best to answer them. And of course, hit us up on Twitter and Instagram, both of them at Teal Town USA. So when last we spoke. The Sharks have gone 2 3 and 0 over their last 5, 7 3 and 0 over their last 10, 17 6 and 2 since the meeting in Montreal. 29 16 and 7 good for 65 points on the season, second in the division, six behind Calgary, three ahead of Vegas, third in the conference. Oh my lord, that's a lot of stats. So let's let's do that hockey. Let's do that week of Sharks hockey. And what happened? Well, it was All-Star weekend. Hockey overlord. <laughs> the Sharks didn't even win. I don't I know. know what lazy doing here. Bastards. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we need to talk to the NHL about saying, you know what? Maybe the division that's hosting, maybe you don't schedule them in the first, you know, in the first game in case they lose. But anywho, speaking <laughs> of which, we had essentially the three games for the All-Star game. Holy crap. The Pacific would lose to the Central 10 to 4. Wheeler, O'Reilly, and Yossi all getting three assists while Landeskog gets a Hattie for the Central. However, EK65 gets two of four goals for the Pacific. It would have been really great if John Gibson had made the trip up for this game, but uh, so it goes. It's, uh, you know, when you, when you get 17,000 people screaming, ducks suck, and there's only like one duck in the building. Yeah, that kind of says something. What says more is when 17,000 people are chanting out, we want flurry when that's the goalie who knocked you out of the playoffs the previous <laughs> season. Uh, also the player who got the loudest booze. <laughs> hey, yeah. now. This barn is so intense. They they have very very strong opinions that are subject to change without notice at in like any time. I yeah. love that. It's Sharks fans for you. Uh, um, I did notice that some of the commentators or not, but the beat writers and stuff had, had posted on Twitter that they were uh, they liked that San Jose's barn was definitely more opinionated about. Uh, the game and so far as like winning and losing because it seemed like uh, the getting uh, the goalie getting chirped wasn't necessarily a normal thing for the all-star game see I knew that guy was a champion coming into media day dude like the way he handled all that questions and the way he was just like riding it man that guy has ice water running through his veins I can see why he's an NHL goalie not a very good one, but I can definitely see why he's an NHL goalie. Dear Lord. Jerk, you're taking the first 20. <laughs> uh, honestly, I, I felt bad for John Gibson because yeah. I really I really do like him as a player, but you know, at the same at the same time, like 
whether or not you're wanting to be there, like I, I think it should click in your head, like, hey, you're on the same team as the hometown guys. I mean, you know, make a save. I, I did notice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did notice that after the seventh goal, he did make a save and got the Bronx cheer for it, which I'm always a big fan of that. Um, Bronx cheer is probably yeah, one of my say, favorite things. Also known as... Oh, good for you! Exactly. I would also like to point out, uh, you, you, you said that EK65 had two of the four goals. I would like to point out, EK65 was the least healthy Pacific Division player there. <laughs> yeah, but he was True. also the most well-rested. Just in case you're keeping score at home. Yeah. Mm. So uh, the second 20 would see the Metro beat the Atlantic 7-4. to four. Crosby, the only player to get three points. Again. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> like this guy hasn't had enough success at SAP Center. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, jerk. Metro beats Atlantic. Uh, you know, is anybody shocked by this? Um. I have no words. The thing that surprised the thing that surprised me was that uh, the Central made it to the final game. Considering in the three years that they've done uh, the three on three tournament prior to this year, they had won zero of the games they played in. Uh, playoffs, D- despite being the quote unquote best division in the NHL. Oh, I'm so tired of that. Oh, yeah. Rock <laughs> Metro beat the Atlantic seven to four. Your thoughts. You know, uh, I'd like to take a minute to go back to John Gibson if I could. Oh, just shit. To... Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Just to, to ask John Gibson what his children are going to think about him <laughs> after after watching him in a place that he clearly doesn't belong. <laughs> oh, come on. It's an exhibition. No, it's, no, nobody no, wants I know. to get hurt. No, I know. I'm just I'm just being a dick because of what Batman told John Scott, which is basically the same stuff that he told John Scott about how like he shouldn't go to the All Star game because he doesn't belong there and stuff. And now you got guys like Gibson who are obviously All Star caliber, but lay big fat eggs like that. Like it happens. I think it should be a testament to um, whoever goes to the All Star game. I think they have a if if they're lethal. In some aspect of their game, they have a good shot, regardless of you know if they're the total package. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's anyway. There's a so seven to four Metro beats Atlantic. Good for freaking Crosby. I'm not a fan of the man personally, but uh, his game. He's got a lot of. Player. Yeah, he's he's got he's got the game, man. And he's not. He's, there's nothing sexy about it. Nothing. <laughs> I don't know when 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 he deflects a puck into the net with his backhand. That's pretty sexy. I'll give him that. No. Yeah. Hey, uh, the one thing I'll give up to Crosby, he tossed a puck over the glass to a person wearing a Capitals jersey. That I'll give. Him. <laughs> hey, you know what though? Com- company guy uh, supports the NHL really well. Yeah, right? and like, didn't he give that guy who was like chirping the crap out of him like a stick that was yeah. like nice chirps, but go easy on me next time? Yeah, like okay, wow. Well, you got you got to respect him for that. And uh, he's he's got the resume to back it up too. Yeah. Uh, you no, know, he's just got the personality of a bowl of grits. Three Stanley yeah. Cups, two gold medals, a World oh, Cup, shut two up. Five. Uh, God, Pierre, sit down. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, no. See, if I was Pierre McGuire Rocket, then I would be Uh-oh. telling you how to podcast. Yeah, he would be man- I, mansplaining I, the whole thing. All right, can we save a little bit for the rest of the show, please? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the Metro would beat the Central ten to five to take home the cash money prize. Crosby gets two goals, three assists, and the MVP because, of course, enough good things have not happened for him yet. Uh, so there you go. That's, I mean. That's essentially your wrap when it comes to the actual game. We'll get into the experience a little bit later into the show, but just wanted to wrap up that that was the final tally. Uh, no shark won any of the skills competition events, so we move on. I would just like, I would just like to point out that for MVP, I did vote for Matt Barzell. As you should, as did I, actually. Yeah. Could, could have had. Yeah, could, could have had. Hashtag it. So let's get into uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly during this time of NHL hockey. So my uh, 
my oh yeah <laughs> is well, uh hey great weather a lot of fun events u.s women's hockey kendall schofield <laughs> thrills at the fastest skater event missing mcdavid's time by barely a second those are some amazing things that i say oh yeah so rocket for the overall experience that the all-star game brought to san jose your oh yeah my oh yeah was the decision by the NHL to invite fans to the media day for the first time. I think that was a, a big deal. And the experience that provided was unique. And I hope they continue to do it. I hope San Jose fans didn't ruin it for the rest of the NHL. But hey, I uh, I think that someone else can. <laughs> <laughs> the way I can read that so many different ways. Jerk, <laughs> yours. Uh, unfortunately, I know I know that we try not to do this, but unfortunately, my really only oh yeah was Kendall Coyne Schofield. I mean, she showed up, you know, made an impression. I mean, I, let's let's be honest. You know, not everybody watches ladies hockey, myself included. Um, I had only heard her name based on the game exhibition game from the uh, the tank last year, but man, she impressed. I mean, her speed was great. Her edge work especially in the corner was great and what i did notice too which i think is the mark of a good skater is when she was in the corner specifically in the first corner instead of gliding or slowing down she kept with her crossovers she kept pushing off and kept her speed up and that's what allowed her to freaking oh my god i'm so passionate i'm knocking things off my desk it's what allowed her to <laughs> jerk it's what allowed her to slingshot um through the second half of the race her like her skating ability and just her form was fantastic. I just, I, I just have this visual of like jerk being so jacked up. He's swinging his hand. Oh my God. He's swinging those arms around and then just starts knocking random things are within three feet of him. That's literally, that's literally what happened. I punched my water bottle into my pen cup. <laughs> there you go. So <laughs> we had the, Oh yeah. Now it's time to get into. Hey now. That's right. The hey now, uh, but you know, look, I, I thought things were pretty damn good for the event overall. Uh, they could have been a little bit better with the scheduling and the signage when it came to the fanfare. Uh, let's be honest, the NHL probably could have promoted this a little earlier than like, I don't know, eight days before the whole thing happened. But some of the scheduling and the signage when you were at the fanfare eh, lacked a little bit to be desired. So hopefully that's something they can work on going forward help some people's out maybe maybe the use of some led boards or something along those lines to really kind of let people know what is happening where it's happening and why it's happening but that's mine rocket your hey now yeah mine's gonna be kind of similar to yours in that there really wasn't too much of a of a, of a clear direction um I mean, even from getting from parking up into the right hall, it was difficult to find the right entrance because everything was so closed. Once you actually got into the hall, it, it, you kind of weren't actually in the hall. You know, you had to like go it through this weird building. There's not a single sign anywhere that says, go this way, go this way, go up, go down, you know, kiss your mother. Like there doesn't say anything. And uh, uh, then once you go inside, it's apparently directional. So once you enter, you do not leave the, the hall in remotely the same place that you entered it. Um, and the Fanatics uh, little gift store was the same way. That but was your idea was, of little? <laughs> that Listen, that was not a whole lot of merchandise. It was just spread out. They, they spread those stanchions way out, and there was not nearly the amount of merchandise that I'm used to that I'm used to seeing that I'm used to be seeing jammed together and everything. That was, that was like a quarter of what I, you could have smushed that down to be in the shark store. All of that stuff would have fit in the shark store. Easy. Yeah, no, I just meant like the square footage that was taking up. And of course you had to, yeah. you know, have some, had to have space because you knew you were going to get a lot of people walking yeah, through, Absolutely. but yeah, I, just to get back to it. Yeah. The scheduling to me needed to be a lockdown a scotch earlier. It seemed like things were a little fluid, a little yeah. too fluid. It was like one day Owen Nolan is signing on Saturday at noon. The next day he's signing at Sunday at two. And then finally he's signing uh, back on Saturday, but now it's at one. It's kind of like, um, okay, 
Jerk, your hey now. Uh, my hey now, and I'm, again, going for the hey now. That's pretty cool. I got an autographed Matt Barzell puck. Hey, hey now. now. Now, how'd you score that, my friend? Uh, they had one of those, uh, um, what do they call those? Those, like, uh, authentic gear dealy things with, like, the jerseys and the photos and all that. I think they're uh, calling that a pop-up store, my friend. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and you know, normally, normally I'm not a autograph purchaser, but, uh, when am I going to be in long Island in the next or nearest future? It's really anybody's guess. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this now. I'm going to pick it up because I'm going to do something a little nice for myself. Here you go. Ready? That's it right there. Hey, okay, now on my desk, prominently displayed. Great, great weekend. Oh, so you've returned everything. But I was going to say it sounded about five minutes ago that nothing was prominently displayed on your desk. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they make a mute button. There mm. you go. So finally, really, uh, fanatics. Holy crap! Do you suck? Oh my god! Do you suck so much? Fanatics, get your shit together, man. Uh, you're holding the event in San Jose, and yet. You don't feel the need to maybe bring extra amounts of merch that happen to feature names like Brent Burns, Eric Carlson, Joe Pavelski. Not at all. No, really. Uh, there was uh, emoji pucks that they had available for all the players that were taking part in the weekend's festivities. And you evidently brought the same amount of Pavelski, Carlson, and Burns stuff that you brought for everybody else. And what happened? You ran out of all of those items on thursday despite knowing that you were going to be open for another three days you also ran out of jerseys that featured those players t-shirts that featured those players why do you suck so bad at estimating stock and what you need to bring you are pissing away revenue literally stop it fanatics get your shit together uh also i uh now that i've let me <clears throat> Excuse me while I dislodge this soapbox away from me. Uh, U.S. women's hockey, Brianna Decker beat Leon Dreisaitl in the passing event for the skills competition. However, no one would know because they didn't televise it. What the F? I'm just saying. And finally, for my really, I don't even know how to pronounce this woman's name. Lauren Jiragui? Jiragui? I don't know. Evidently, she's from the music group Fifth Harmony, and she absolutely butchered the national anthem. I was like ready to hear the Canadian anthem a second time instead of listening to this woman. They were showing people in the crowd that I'm not even kidding you had the look of on their face that said, Really? That's, oh my Lord. So yeah, I had a lot for my really this week. Rocket, I mean, oh. Try to tr top that woman trying to do the national anthem. I'm just saying. It, I never knew the national anthem was a love song until the All Star game. Are you done? Well, I am now. Go. God. Oh, stop. All right. So, uh, yeah, yeah I you've think. You've never spun a yarn. I, that's true. That's true. I think my, my really for this week would probably be the idea that. Uh, they weren't going to pony up the cash for, for the lady beating dry sidle in the skills competition, you know, cause the winner of the skills competition gets some cash and they weren't going to do it. And through the power of uh, social media pressure, folks came through and they were like, all right, we'll pay her. And they, those girls got paid as well. They should. And I hope that there's more talk of including the Olympic women's team members and the national team members even with the skills competitions uh, further down the line because it's good representation. I saw a lot of stuff on social media saying that people's little girls were uh, inspired and awed and ready to, to embrace this challenge that they see is uh, available for them to take. So I, I uh, you know, it's, it's a really, but there's, there's light at the end of it. Hell yeah, I'd be down with like the same night that they do skills competition. Hey, let's uh, let's see a little three on three, you know, U.S. versus Team Canada or something. Uh, I mean, let's yeah. have some fun with it, man. Yeah. Uh, jerk, you're really. 
I don't really, I don't have a traditional really, but the thing that I kind of think about is, and I'm going to use the word really here, but man, Miro Heiskanen really took a bad spill, didn't he? In the skills competition. <laughs> like, no, like honestly, like that was kind of terrifying to watch, especially because he, when he popped up, like he was not like laughing, like, oh yeah, I totally just ate it. Like he was like kind of pissed that he fell. And I was really, really, uh, nervous for him because it looked like a hard fall yeah yeah that well and there was a couple of people that kind of ate it during the wasn't uh didn't petterson kind of have a shaky start and like looked over and said do i get a do-over and they're like no dude keep going <laughs> <laughs> Yo, jerk, roll. <laughs> so what, what is this do-over what are you talking about uh so anyway there's our good bad and the ugly so you know what time it is Oh, good for you. Oh, time to hand up those stars of the week. We start with you, Rocket. Now, you, you can include the Washington Capitals game, or you can just talk about All-Star altogether, whichever you choose. Uh, so, Brendan Dillon was... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, although, like, I was going through my stuff, and I, I, was, I was petting my Brendan Dillon pucks because I'm a freaking weirdo. And I did get my Brendan Dillon stick out of storage. Thanks, Slushy Jake, for being a nice person at one moment. So, uh, no, I think this week my, my all-star is going to go to Connor McDavid. Uh, the kid had a lot of weight on his shoulders uh, being thrown at him from members of the media. And so he rolled into all-star for kind of a little bit of a break away from that and the media kind of kind of pushed on him a little bit harder than they should have I think and he handled the entire situation with with a lot of grace and I think that he showed up with the fresh haircut and looked good and I hope he had a good time in San Jose because it was nice having him here how great would it be to see a player in the NHL with McDavid's talent but Tortorella's mouth <laughs> my god <laughs> that would be great jerk your star i'm for, for, can i give it to that guy <laughs> <laughs> uh no you know what yeah, you can because didn't i give one of my stars to like the guy who we were going to trade somebody for like the fourth round pick that we were going to get for somebody that we didn't actually get for that yet uh, you did jerk. Jerk. so jerk. you can go ahead and Make that guy your star. Go for it. Sure. <laughs> no, my uh it is your star to do with whatever you please. My my star, uh cue cue up the booing. Uh my star is gonna be John Tavares. Um huh. because and ra ra <laughs> whatever. And, yeah. and you know what? Media media day, skills competition, and all-star game. He was showered with booze by the fans but you know what he a was he was a professional about it you know raised the stick said hello to the fans you know showed up played the game the way he was supposed to despite it being a for fun event he was a professional and i commend that because no matter if even if you have the thickest skin it gets annoying when people you don't know are booing you after a while. I don't know because obviously they do know who you are. Otherwise they wouldn't boo you. You know what I mean? So it's not like these nobodies. It's like, Oh my gosh, they're fans, but they're kind of like, okay, I watched, I can't remember what I was watching. It was something like a long time ago. And there was a line in it that said, hate implies love, which is true because there's a balance in everything. So the more you hate something, the more you love it. It's just misplaced emotion, and I get that. So for people to boo him, I think kind of was just like a little – it made him giggle a little bit on the inside. I don't think it was annoying for him. Um, I think that it just looked more funny than anything else. Dude. If, if people had slashed his tires and told him to go you know, hang himself and a bunch of other stuff, like gotten real crappy about it, then, yeah, I think he probably would have been like, you guys suck, but – if they're just going, boo, then he's like, nah. Drew, there's some players like Drew Doughty that just get off on it. Oh, well, that's the other thing is, is like, if I were, if I were in that situation and like people were booing me, like I would be like full, like full on, like 
pro wrestler like heel, like wave at the crowd, smile, exactly. yep. all that stuff. Yep, that's, that's who, part of the fun, you know. Who, so who I think maybe it? extra good time for him, you know. No, there was uh, there. There's a player or two who used to do stuff like that. I'm trying to think of who that was. No, there was a player <laughs> too. I mean, like. <laughs> You have your dowdy types, but I do remember there was one player that like the booze would come and they would just be like, you know, like waving the crowd saying, yeah, bring it more. I want to hear more. I don't Patrick, know. Was Patrick Kane like that? No, 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 no. This, like, well, I know like, older. like Theron Flurry in the 90s. Yeah, that's who I was thinking of. Okay. Yeah. Little, little bit of Theo Flurry. He was, he definitely had that vibe going on. There was somebody else I'm trying to. Oh, I can't. I wish I could remember. But yeah, you get a couple of those. I was surprised Rafi Torres wasn't like that a little bit, to be honest. But <laughs> anyway, uh, my star of the week, um, I was going to give it to Austin Matthews just for pulling the whole, you know, take off my jersey and there's a Marla one underneath. But you know what? I do not reward pandering people. And that I was, was going to say, I was going to say, I would have booed that more. Yes. There's... Yeah. No, I would have. I would have thrown popcorn at the guy. Yeah, well, I get what you're doing. I think it's cute, but that's pandering to the crowd. Cheap, so, <laughs> cheap, cheap if, crowd pop. Yeah, if anything, Austin Matthews, you owe me a star for that. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my star for the week goes to the Sharks alumni. I mean, they were great ambassadors over the time. Uh, you had Owen Nolan, Danny Boyle. Uh, Jonathan Chichu, Mike Ricci. Oh, I'm sorry, Michael Ricci. Uh, Yevgeny Nabokov. I mean, and not to mention the amount of photos I saw being tweeted between the skills competition and the All Star game. I mean, like Jody Shelley out there walking around. Now, Sharks alumni. Now, from what I know, Jody Shelley is not like a member of the Sharks Alumni Foundation, but just former Sharks showing up and just being great ambassadors for San Jose and the, everything that was going on that you guys, you get my star. And for that, Oh, good for you. All right. We're going to see if they get it right. Kids. Let's find out. Pizza. Pizza. You assholes. That is the only right answer. All right, right, right. Okay. So for the all-star game, EK 65 participates. He does play is not going to be playing versus Arizona, but uh, <laughs> he did participate and play in the skills competition and the three-on-three -three because, you know, it's not like anybody was overexerting themselves. So good for you. My other thing, where the hell was Sharky at the fanfare? I never saw him once. I was there three days. Didn't see Sharky a single time. Now, I know you got to do some events at the tank, but dear God, man. Hello. And... Uh, Finally, for my kind of, I guess my shark bite is for the All-Star game, I got to see a lot of mascots, and there were some good. There were people like Harvey the Hound from Calgary, awesome dude, willing to take as many photos as you want. NJ Devil, who also is a badass dancer. The dude mm. can cut a rug. <laughs> he, he can. I'm just saying. Um, Hunter. Mascot from Edmonton, also very cool. Now that terrifying can trash about, panda. Can we talk about Hunter's abs for a second? That guy oh, is oh. ripped. Like he loves to pull his shirt up and show off his abs. And that cat has like a twelve pack. It's amazing. <laughs> like it's it's super incredible. Like he'll just come at you and pull his jersey up and like whoop, cat abs. Didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> 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 now I know what he's hunting. Uh, hey now, uh, the looking really for, funny thing for a cougar. Oh, here we go. Here <laughs> we go. Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> the other thing that we know is mascots. Uh, typically, it's kind of like part and parcel of the gig. You don't talk. You don't say anything. I mean, you. There's Sharky, who you will occasionally hear a little <laughs> or a little, you know, a little a little whistle noise or something, but that's it. Uh, Chance from Vegas was like ready to have a full blown conversation with me. That the, the, the Chance can spin a yarn, is what I'm saying. Uh, Moose from Winnipeg. Uh, I don't know if they don't have deodorant up in Winnipeg, like, but dude, go find some. I'm just it's saying. Well, I, mean, I was gonna say they don't have lights, central heating, or Wi Fi. So, what do you expect? Exactly. 
I, yeah, I guess if you don't have to see somebody, you don't know who, who's the one that smells, but it was Moose. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did, okay, on that note, did you see the the tweet by the Jets Twitter account pertaining to that inside joke? About the, the lights and yeah. the internet and the... No, no, what's up? I saw it that. Was, it was, you're going to have to give me a second to find it because it was, I think it was before, right before the All-Star break. Well, that's okay. Cause uh, so I, I will say Moose willing to take a photo with anybody, but you didn't want to take it too close is what I'm <laughs> saying. And I also was unable to find Bailey from the LA Kings, the entire fan fest. I don't know what was going on there. And maybe him and shark were having drinks or something. And, uh, they went to the dispensary. Yeah, it could be. Uh, Wild Wing from Anaheim, uh, you know, also not the nicest, or I should say not the most fan-friendly. Didn't see him taking too many photos. And to no one's surprise, Gritty is an asshole. <laughs> that dude is a seven-foot orange asshole. He was running over people. He would not stop to take photos. He would just constantly in motion. I don't know what his problem was. And you would think that a player, a player, a mascot that was getting so much pub to the point where other mascots, whether it was uh, Thunderbug from Columbus, uh, Bailey from LA, who, whoever, they're all talking that like they're all tweeting out that yeah, we get it, we have a new mascot, can we move on? <laughs> and yeah, Do you gritty think she feels robbed. Uh, Gritty's ego is just huge. He embodies the entire spirit of Philadelphia. And I'll tell you what, he's not wrong. Like every Philadelphian, basically uh, the thing that I talk to you about people from Philly who, who are big fans of Gritty, if not the Flyers themselves, uh, they say basically that like first Gritty was introduced and everyone was like, what the hell is this ugly, terrible thing? And then somebody who wasn't from Philadelphia was talking some smack about it. And they were like, what is this? And then he got into that Twitter beef with uh, Iceberg and the the Pittsburgh uh, Penguins, Penguin mascot. And also then, also another cool mascot this weekend was Iceberg. Yeah, but go yeah ahead. it was actually pretty cool. Um, and then uh, the, entire, the entire town was solidified and being like, oh, no, he's ours. You, you can't you can't talk it to him like that. He's he's a Philadelphian. No. So. um. Yeah, like it's just you can't you can, there's nothing you could do to stop it. Like he is a phenomenon and will remain to be so until Seattle's mascot is unveiled. <laughs> oh man, you talk about a team that's on the friggin' clock. Holy crap, you better top gritty. Were you able to find the tweet that you're talking about, jerk? Uh yes, I did. So it is a gif of the um well, it's like the um when you don't have an internet connection on uh on, <laughs> on um it's I believe little... this is Safari. Wait, no, wait a minute. It's... So hold on. You're saying somebody tweeted out a picture Crow. of Puck Guy? <laughs> no, it's <laughs> uh, Yes, Chrome. My mistake. And uh, it says no internet. And they fashion fashioned a hockey player uh, jumping over some cactus, cacti, excuse me. And it says things we love about Winnipeg. Cold during winter. Check. Dark at night. Check. Great Wi-Fi. Face palm emoji. Hashtag NHL all-star. Right now. And I, I think I responded to them with an Elsa gif and said, "You need to, you need to Elsa that stuff and let it go." I quoted their tweet with the eyes emoji. Mm. Either way, for the most part, the mascots were pretty chill. There were a couple that stood out, not maybe for the right <laughs> reasons, but because one of the things that I was looking forward to is I was kind of like. You know, I like to collect things to a certain extent. Like, uh, you know, if you've ever seen the wall in my office, I'm kind of collecting some pucks here and there. I collect a little bit of Sharks merch. But the one thing that I thought would have been a cool collectible, well, I shouldn't say collectible, but something for me that I thought would have been cool and which I was trying to do during the fanfare was how cool would it be to get a photo, a selfie with every mascot that plays in the Sharks division? And that's what I was working on. So it was like, Got one with Finn from Vancouver, Harvey the Hound from Calgary, you know, Hunter from Edmonton, Chance from Vegas. But to no surprise, the SoCal mascots suck. <laughs> <laughs> they have that L.A. ego going on. They've gone Hollywood, people. 
So let's move on a little bit more into shark bites and former sharks alert. Florida Panthers have waned former shark Jamie McGinn. He cleared, has been sent down to the minors. What does this mean for anyone, jerk? Does this mean that, like, Ty now gets to, like, have lunch with them because they're both no longer big time, or what's up? Yeah, honestly, it, it kind of sucks because if you remember McGinn's last season with the Sharks, that was actually his best mm-hmm. season, you know, and Perfect I... time to move him. Yeah, and <laughs> I... At the time, I was very upset about the trade because I thought he was young and really was coming into his own and, you know, played pretty well in, uh, you know, in Colorado, in Buffalo, Anaheim, Florida. You know, he, he's had some good stretches. I believe he had a 20 goal year. But, you know, when you're kind of a fringe player and you make your money off of one good season, it's hard to it's hard to keep up that pace. And I think that's what we're seeing with him going to the minors now. For all we know, he could put up 20 goals in like five games with their AHL team. And all of a sudden he's right back into things. But from what I understand, just based on how he's played lately, it feels like this was kind of a long time coming. Yeah. Well, we also found out during this break that Joe Thornton has been dealing with a broken toe and ankle infection since the beginning of the year. Uh, Rocket, you know a lot about infections. What do you take from this? <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to go for the cheap joke. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good in the hood. No, I think that he uh, is probably already dead, and they're just <laughs> keeping him alive with a double-A battery pack, and uh, they got him hanging out at the Tesla plant. Elon Musk is doing some weird stuff to him that we haven't really talked about yet. SpaceX is involved, I'm sure. Uh, you know, and he'll be good as new in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, you know, your standard, standard Kaiser coverage. I think, you know, he never should have got rid of the beard, but clearly it was like, like a solar panel. It just kept shooting him. You know, <laughs> it was, it was like the, um, oh, who's the dude? Samson. It was like Samson's hair, like from Samson and Delilah, kind of the whole story thing of it. Like his strength was in his hair and, and she cut his hair and then he wasn't he was he was wimpy then all of a sudden <laughs> oh what a bitch uh yeah. so, <laughs> <laughs> the penalty kill for the sharks has fallen from fifth to tenth since december 31st you know you remember that game eight to five calgary hello what a new year so hopefully the sharks are going to get their act together with that barracuda update time people <laughs> So Jacob Middleton, Francis Perron, and Carnage all had a pretty decent showing at the AHL All-Star Game. Jerk, what's up with that? Uh, Well, I'm kind of surprised that Perron actually went to the All-Star Game. You know, he started out really oh, hot. Oh, bite your tongue. <laughs> He's, you know, he started out really hot uh, to start the season. He was the best player on the Barracuda, despite being the throw-in in the Eric Carlson trade. Um, but, you know, kind of kind of slowed down a bit uh, as the calendar turned to 2019, but I know he had at least a goal in the all-star game. I believe he may have had an assist as well. Um, You know, good way to get, get your season turned around at the halfway point. And in the uh, tonight's game for the Barracuda, which is on February the 1st, uh, he's got a goal and an assist so far. So maybe, maybe some home cooking, you know, uh, getting things going for him. (laughs) Oh, I think what we're trying to say is, I think what we're trying to say is there may be a vacancy in the Kevin LeBanc penalty box. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What's going on? I I hate that you're not joking. That like that's actually a thing, though. It is. I'm telling you, it's no more soundstorm. No more sandstorm. Not a Sharks game until LeBanc's been in the box. It's true. <laughs> in fact, I look forward to the bobblehead next season where it's just LeBanc in the penalty box. <laughs> Dude. Oh, my God. I really, yes. I mean, in all respect to Kevin LeBanc as a player and everything, but yes, please, Kevin LeBanc in the box bobblehead needs to happen. San Jose Sharks, if you're listening, <laughs> you need to make that happen. Please. I don't ask for any financial payment for that idea. I just want one for myself for free. Oh, That's please. It. Please, please, I, please make it happen. I'll pay I, for it. I don't care. <laughs> I don't want to have to pay for the promotional ticket. <laughs> I do, I do. If you could make that an all everybody through the door giveaway, I would really appreciate that. But I don't oh, know wow. that, that everyone would appreciate the humor. So I'm just saying. Well, I don't care. 
Oh, my Lord. Okay. <laughs> uh, dear Lord. What's going on with Sasha Chemilevsky and the World Juniors jerk? Uh, well, uh, Sasha Chemilevsky playing with the Ottawa 67s, for those of you who don't know, um, had a had a, uh, a grande vanilla bean frappuccino with the Barracuda last season. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Ottawa? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, and had three goals in six regular season games. So small sample size, but an intriguing sample size for sure. Uh, and then goes back to Ottawa this year. He's got 18 goals, 33 assists in 38 games, uh, including a hat trick that he posted in the game last night on the 31st of January. Um, and he has been bank, you know, he banked a good chunk of those points pre world juniors, but ever since the world juniors, he, um, you know, he's playing some, been playing some really good hockey and even at the world juniors, I mean, you know, it's, it was a month ago, obviously, but you look, he started out on the fourth line by the pre tournament, excuse me, tournament. And then, you know, by the time he, that USA was in the gold medal game against the Finns, you know, he was playing with Josh Norris, especially on the power play. And, you know, while the U S ended up winning the silver medal medal, Chemilevsky had the, the teaser goal and he assisted on the tying goal. So he, He's got that that big game that big game uh, mentality, if you will. Coincidentally, also wore number eight in that tournament. We know another number eight who has a big game kind of mentality. Um, but he's just been playing really well, and even uh, Ivan Chekovic as well, who's playing his his team ex- escapes me at the moment, but I know he's playing in the QMJHL right now. He, last I checked, he was either leading or tied for leading. Um, his team in points, and he may still be top five in that entire league in points right now. Thirty six goals, forty four assists in forty six games, which is ridiculous. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, these are scary enough. These are guys who were born in nineteen ninety nine, so they got a lot of youth in them. And <laughs> if all I'm saying is, if the Sharks decide the salary cap is something they want to cozy up right next to. Maybe these guys put on a teal sweater with a shark on the front of it next year. Uh, oh, boy. You're talking hmm. about these pieces coming along. I think what, you know, let me just put it in kind of the Cliff Notes version is when you look at what uh, Chekovic, Shemilevsky are doing, I think what we're trying to say is Kevin LeBanc, <laughs> you're on the clock, buddy. And <laughs> that's I'm cruel. Just, uh, that's just cruel. I would, I would get it together. I would just like to say too, uh, Chekovic has 80 points in 46 games, which is leading the entire QMJHL uh, in scoring. Um, he, the Russian, has 17 Canadians behind him. <laughs> so there you go. Oh yeah. my lord! This is like Sharks episode four, A New Hope. I'm just saying. Uh, so finally, if in case you didn't know. We did a little interview a couple weeks ago with Sharks co-presidents Jonathan Becker and John Tatora that went up, and unfortunately, I forgot to promote that the last show. So do us a favor, go check that out. We talk about some fun stuff, some of that being a little bit of the fanatics, because you know what a fan I am of them. Uh, Yeah, so go check that out. We ready to wrap it around? I'm ready. I thought we were reaching around. I didn't stretch out. Have the goddamn common courtesy to give him a reach around. Oh, for Pete's sake! I don't what? know who this. I don't know who this Pete character is. <laughs> 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 uh, he coaches the sharks, duh. <laughs> uh, I know. Uh, okay, so Jerk has like Los Angeles as the fire sale officially begun now. Uh, they have. They traded a 29-year-old defenseman who has a year left on his deal after this year. So, in other words, not getting it done. Uh, I am. I'm. I, I cannot wait for them to trade uh, 26-year-old Tyler Toffoli <laughs> while 34-year-old Jeff Carter plays out the last three years of his deal. Um, oh man, Tyler Toffoli. I, I've always said that I liked his game. I would not mind him in a teal sweater. I'm uh, sorry. Hey. They're going to trade to Foley and sign Kovalchuk to an extension. <laughs> oh, my God. Stop. I, uh. I, you know what, though? I, I th- And I've been 
so pretty much since he's got hired, I've been very complimentary of of Rob Blake as their GM, and and I think <laughs> that ends now. <laughs> I, no, 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 no. I, you know, I think he's doing the right thing in this case. I, the Tanner Pearson trade to Pittsburgh, I I'm still unsure about that one. Considering <laughs> I am unsure. <laughs> <laughs> considering Haglin is probably going to walk on July one, but who knows? Maybe the Kings flip him to. I don't know, maybe mm-hmm. another playoff team for a fourth round pick. It's really anybody's guess. But, you know, the re- I mean, man, Jake, I love like Jake Muzzin is a fantastic defenseman, one of the most underrated defensemen in the NHL. But that return that Rob Blake got for Jake Muzzin. Oh, my God. If I'm a Kings fan, I'm excited. Like, who doesn't love draft picks for starters? And yeah, right. you get a prospect forward which you need, you get a prospect defenseman who's been lighting up the Ontario Hockey League, which you arguably need anymore. I think if Rob, if the if the mindset that Rob Blake had with the Jake Muzzin trade, if he puts that across the entire Kings rebuild, they're going to be in a good spot. That's all I'm saying. Finish him! <laughs> Dude, I gotta say though, like, just between seeing the limited amount of Kings fans tweets and also living with a Kings fan, Jake Muzzin seemed to be on the receiving end of a lot of ire from that fan base. And it seemed like mm-hmm. every bad play was his fault. Mm-hmm. Every every beginning of every just like missed assignment, crumbled to peace, turnover, bad puck in the net of the wrong net was Jake Muzzin's fault. It's so as if you're if, saying that Jake Muzzin is the Brendan Dillon of LA. <laughs> kind of, you know? So if he goes on to greatness with Toronto, I mean, that would just be like the biggest um, insult to LA fans. I think that would just really stick in their craw. Uh, I don't know how much I would like to see Toronto succeed uh, for the next year or so, but uh, yeah. if they, well, if they surpass the Kings more power to them. Well, and, and, and that's the other thing, too, is you're going to start seeing this, too, with, like, trades during this coming trade deadline as a whole. It's like, you know, Muzzin has a year after this year on his deal. Like, obviously, like, rentals are still going to happen, right? But I, I feel like you're going to see a lot more trades where there's some cost certainty after the current season kind of thing, you know, like where a team is going to be like, well, you know, this guy's a pending UFA next year. Why don't we get two runs out of him instead of one kind of thing? Mm-hmm. I think you're going to see a lot of that. And especially Jake Muzzin too. I mean, you know, like you said, Rocket, he he does draw the ire of a, a lot of Kings fans, or at least did. But, you know, like you said, good for 40 points, very physical player, good skater. I think I think he's going to do good things for Toronto. But it, what it really boils down to is do we want Toronto to do good things? Exactly. Exactly. And that's my dilemma. I'm in a moral pickle right now. It's only been what 52 years? I digress. Uh, all right. Patrick Marlowe, uh, if you're watching. Yeah. No. Wouldn't it be great just to just to see something a little different from the podium? Like you could just see him come up and go like like call it like a like a golf analyst. Just go, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we have a trade to announce (laughs) that like i'd be fine with that or if he just went like full-blown like friggin you know broadway chorus line we have a trade i mean (laughs) i'm just so something different than we have a trade to announce like i want something different out of it like if he just went up there and went trade and that was it like (laughs) i'd be fine with that (laughs) how do you how do you feel about auto-tune Oh, okay. That could be interesting. Yeah. Trade. <laughs> okay. We should probably move on. <laughs> we should just every every trade this deadline, we should just write a rap about it. Oh, uh, okay. I like that. Boy, yeah, get Eminem Eminem up there to do like every trade. Oh, that would be so good. The lightning oh. got a D- the lightning got a D man who's sick, but now they have no more draft picks. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> wow this pick used to belong to toronto but now it's in florida to make the girls go oh <laughs> two firsts and a third for a big steam and turd <laughs> more, yes. more more like to make the girls go by luongo oh ah! hey now hey now hey now, hey now. <laughs> uh so finally 
<laughs> Jay Z, if you're listening. What? Yes. Yeah. All right. So to finish this up before we get into the uh, preview of the next games, uh, Rocket, um, how did you feel about Pierre Maguire mansplaining hockey to Ken Cole Schofield? <laughs> Well, you know, oh if ever, God. if ever, God, if ever everybody needed that juxtaposition of old attitude and current attitude, it would be that moment. And I think that it really won a lot of people over that she had excelled so much with her speed and ability and it just impressed the pants off of everyone there. Um, so she'd already made her showing and proven herself. She, she, you know, her, her resume speaks for itself. And so everybody who was watching this casual fans, seasoned fans, people who don't even watch hockey saw her, they saw the proof, you know, it was right there. Bam, bam, bam. Doesn't lie. And so they're watching this interview with this man who's talking to her. Like she doesn't know the Whoa. difference between I icing and offsides. And I think that everybody who watched these two events were kind of like, is he serious? Like, yeah, you know, like, is he serious? And I like the fact that they, it was so bad that after that one interview, they pulled her away from him for the rest of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. It was, it was that bad. Like every even people in the booth are like, oh god, this is bad. Okay, so uh, what are we gonna do? You, you down there, you over there, put her up there now. Make it happen. It makes you wonder, like, if they made that decision after they saw how quickly the reaction turned against Pierre on social oh, yeah. media. Because, Absolutely. Oh my lord! I mean, yeah. it was trending. Even Wiz, uh, Wazinski was sitting there going. Okay, I heard there was some cringe-inducing moment between McGuire and Kendall Coyne. What happened? And then, like, you see 10 minutes later, he goes, oh, yeah, that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I saw a tweet. I saw a tweet that said uh, it was like, it, you know, it, it kind of set it up. It was like, you know, Kendall Coyne is a six-time world champion, and she's being mansplained, blah, blah, blah. But then the follow-up tweet was, <laughs> Kendall Coyne should ask Pierre if he knows how to skate backwards. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no, I, I saw one something. Oh, my Lord. What was it? It was something along the lines of, you, you know, if this is like if Pierre's career is embodied by him mansplaining hockey to a gold medal winner like, like a lot of people said you know they basically should have said or the response they thought that now granted you have to admit kendall handled that really really well she could have taken that in a whole different direction she could have <laughs> sat there and said you know I'm, you know and, and so how long were you in the nhl for i mean there there was a lot of things that she could have went to because that's the one thing that you know Pierre is not let's be honest Pierre is known for one and one thing only and that is basically polishing Sidney Crosby's apple bag that's what yep. he's known for yep. <laughs> how Literally. many how many teams fired you as their head coach exactly like if you're Ooh. so great at you know it's kind of oh you're so, if you're so great at explaining hockey how come every team you coach sucked you know like she really could have taken, or she could have won another. One. Oh, you know what? You should coach the women's team next year. You're so good at explaining things. <laughs> like, I mean, just geez, Louise, that was just a bad look. And again, credit all uh, everything to Kendall Coin Schofield for for. Oh, she was a beast. Her yeah, and but and her response was complete class. And uh, I really root for her. I hope she figures you, you, whatever her career brings to her. I would love to see, you know, to hear more female voices coming from whether it's, uh, you know, pre post. Like, how cool would it be if she replaced Curtis Brown? I like me some Curtis Brown, but that would be an interesting dynamic, especially if they like had a little bit of fun with it and made it kind of a, a Jimmy Fallon, Tina Fey thing. Like, we're going to talk about hockey and we both know our stuff. But we're also going to have a little fun with it too. Like, I mean, you somebody needs to take advantage of this because that that girl knows her shit. Mm. So, either way, I digress. But Kendall, I look forward to seeing you and more women like you breaking into the broadcasting element of the game. It's been a boys' club for far too long. I am ready 
more than ready to hear some female voices throw down and kick ass. So with that, we will preview the next games coming up for the Sharks, which leads us to the next one versus the Desert Dogs. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Fourth and final meeting versus the Dogs. Previous three, the Sharks are 1-1-1 one, one, and one versus Arizona. Oh. After playing four away and the All-Star break, Sharks get a quick hit home and then bounce for another four games away, this time up in Canada where the Wi-Fi is. No, I'm kidding. Uh, the <laughs> versus Arizona at Winnipeg, at Calgary, at Edmonton. Don't tell me that those games don't mean a shit ton because three of them are against people in their own division one of them being against the team that is uh, about six points ahead of you so rocket versus arizona at winnipeg at calgary at edmonton remember that eric carlson at this point game time decision versus arizona however mark edward vlasic is due to return after missing a month oh thank god Okay, so uh, I'm not sure how this will roll out. I'm I'm not 100 percent sure about the gamesmanship. Roll out, you know. Is I'm just <laughs> not 100 percent sure on the gamesmanship that's been going on so far. Like hockey players and, and teams in general, so notoriously shady about disclosing things, you know. So I'm you never know what's actually happening versus what they want you to think. I hate this kind of manipulation, guy. Damn it. Um, so against the desert dogs, I don't care. We're all gonna be drunk. Okay. Hey now. Yeah, we've got our hey. we've got our drinking games ready and prepared, and we are just gonna drink ourselves until we don't care anymore. It's funny you bring that up because <laughs> if you remember the last game versus the dogs was a national game, and I'm not gonna lie, it seemed if you looked at Randy Hahn and Brody Brazil's Twitter feeds, they seemed a little upset that they weren't able to uh, play the drinking game. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I think that they they enjoy it because it's one of the 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 you know, it's just a little thing that that they do when it interacts with the fans who watch the the feed and I think everybody has a good time for it. You know, it's like a club. It's like a secret handshake. <laughs> yes, uh, I look forward. I think the Sharks should should take Arizona. I think they should take Winnipeg. I think they should take Edmonton, Calgary. Holy crap! Now we all remember the last time, jerk that the Sharks faced Calgary. It was an eight to five demolishing on New Year's Eve and it didn't end well, my friend. Hashtag our flames. Um, <laughs> yes. uh, you know what? Honestly, if, um, <laughs> if the if Sharks the- can't win, <laughs> let it be the flames. <laughs> all, I'm, all I'm saying is I have a flames third Jersey in my closet. Um, <laughs> no, but the, anytime something like this happens, you know, where a Sharks player is, you know, like hit late or whatever, the Sharks generally do a good job about keeping their composure, you know, I, I think the most we'll see is maybe Brendan Dillon will go next to Sam Bennett during whistle and say, you know, hey, I'm here, just so you know. And yeah. then that, and that's usually the end of it. I don't think there's going to be some big major fracas uh, in this game, though if there was, I mean, I, I would be all for it. Um, Wasn't it Bennett that had like kind of a, you know, a little bit of hey now in the last game? Yeah, he smoked, um, I want to say Shimmick, like, a yes. second and a like a second and a half or a second after his um you know his pass out of the zone but yeah again, but the, it was it was like with 30 seconds left and and Bennett like literally skated like 20 feet 25 feet to get at him yeah and i mean obviously you don't want to see stuff like that but at the same time the shark the sharks do a pretty good job at not allowing their emotions to take over them um which i think is good in a situation like this um Really, the thing that I'm most excited for about this game against the Flames is, are the Flames going to wear their third jerseys? I certainly hope so. (laughs) (laughs) Really? That's what you're looking for? Okay. Dude, are you going to tell me those jerseys are not beautiful? Oh, they're fantastic. They're gorgeous. (laughs) But I'm just saying. (laughs) Yes, Mr. Turk. (laughs) Yes. Uh, But honestly, these games, I could see these games go, you know, I could see these games go any possible way honestly i could see the sharks win all four i could see the sharks lose three out of four um they probably should beat old winnipeg but they'll probably lose new winnipeg is going to be a tough one um our flames again another tough one but i think the sharks can get it done 
Edmonton. Okay, a rocket. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm 100% with you there. And I think this goes back to things that I've said in previous podcasts about how dynamic the Sharks are. And when they're really good, they're really, really good. But it's unfortunate that they're so inconsistent. So, uh, again, I'm 100% with you where that, you know, I could see them taking all four and I could also see them losing three out of four. Well, I'll tell you this the Sharks, six points out of first place. To me, this the this first two weeks, February, it's the key. This is going to be kind of like the make or break for the Sharks. And the reason why I say that is because four of their next five and five of their next seven are all divisional games. Oh. This is the time that you, you know, you make hay with this. Arizona, Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, and then Vancouver again. Now sprinkled in between those, game against Winnipeg, game against Washington. This is where you, you know, kind of jump out and say, we don't want to play Calgary or Vegas in the first round. We want to win the division and let those teams beat the crap out of each other while we go and play, I don't know, Dallas, Minnesota, oh, somebody. Oh, uh, I Dallas. wouldn't mind Dallas, to be honest with you. <laughs> I think that'd be fun. Yeah. All right. My tea time is. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, when was the last time the Sharks faced Dallas in the playoffs, man? It was like over a decade ago. So there, there's a certain four overtime game that comes to mind. Oh, yeah. Which, by by the way, young hockey jerk, who was still a smallish child at the time, was a, wee lad. a, wee was lad. a combination of being upset the Sharks lost and tired because that game went to quadruple overtime. <laughs> I st- <laughs> when the Sharks, when Brendan Morrow scored that damn goal, I actually started crying because I was just so frustrated and upset. <laughs> oh, I've been there. <laughs> so that's this is the time to really try to like figure out, are you going to take this division? You know, like I said, for the next five, five of the next seven in your division time to take out the men from the boys. I wish I would have had the Calgary schedule in front of me. I'd like to see what the record is of the teams that they'll be facing over that t- same stretch, but they lost, oh, to yeah. the Cap- they lost to the capitals tonight. That is true. So that, you know, it's like, you're only helping them, man. <laughs> Come on, San Jose. The when Calgary keeps trying to open the door, just walk through it, man. Just walk through it. That's all I'm saying. Rocket, your final thoughts on where the people can find you on the social media. Holy hell, let's get the man. We are running long. I didn't realize mm-hmm. we were going to go this long. Oh yeah, Jerk knew. I knew. You didn't know. <laughs> hashtag hashtag foreseen. Yeah, right. You know, this is what happens when you get the gang back together. It just goes, man. Uh, final thoughts. Hey, everybody listening. I'm sorry if this ran long. We had a good time recording it. I hope you had a good time listening. Uh, my name is Rocket Backhander. You can find me on Twitter posting about hockey life in general. Just, you know, it's, it's a, it's an extension of my personality in written form. That's all it is. Uh, it's capital R, capital B, little Backhander76. That's R, Backhander76 on Twitter. Uh, check me out. All my photographs are on Instagram. Rocket backhander one word. And if you're nice, I'll let you know about my Snapchat. Oh, oh jerk man. <laughs> well, uh, it, it, it's like our good pal Ian Reed says when the Sharks do good, it's good. Mm. And the Sharks haven't played a game in like 12 days. So it, it's really hard to say what's going to happen on Saturday against the Arizona. <laughs> Uh, not Phoenix. Coyotes. Are you trying to say that next time you're going to give your star to the NHL schedule makers? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you know, I think this game, it's going to be, it's going to be one of the, it's a statement game, but not really because yes, Fe- oh, gee, Phoenix, Arizona is, you know, they're, they're not in the playoffs and they've played some pretty meh hockey this year, but they're also two points out of a playoff spot. So you can't afford to, let them do their thing. You need to take care of them. You know, the last time we played them, their starting goalie was out for the rest of the season. And I'm happy to inform you their starting goalie is still out for the rest of the season. So you got to make the most of your opportunities. And I think what better way to come off a 10 day break than to beat one of the worst teams in your division. That's all I'm saying. You can, you can, uh, if you agree with the way I think, or you disagree and you want to tell me how stupid I am, 
Oh my God. Listen to that segue. That was beautiful. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and nowhere else uh, at hockey underscore jerk, where if you tweet me, I may reply or I may not. It's the chance you're going to have to take. It all depends on where you, whether you're current on your subscription fee, right? <laughs> where would you rank the Calgary Flames jersey? That's what determines if I respond or not. Hmm. <laughs> jersey jargon five coming soon. Oh, Jesus. Oh, okay. boy. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, it's so time to get out of here. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> AJ <laughs> underscore strong on Twitter and on Instagram. Occasionally doing some little gramming for the Teal 10 USA. Final thoughts. Hey, get your PK back to where it was. Uh, lock, be locked and loaded, man. You got Vlasic back. You, got, you know you're going to get Carlson back soon. Just focus on uh goaltending let's be honest focus on goaltending man we cannot be entering the month of february while your starting goaltender is sub 900 on save percentage all right get it together limit the amount of rubber that jones has to stare at figure out the high danger chances eliminate those get yeah. it together i don't really like rubber it feels weird it does it really does. <laughs> so with that, if you've noticed, uh, for the 2019, our resolution is to make our podcast a little more adult friendly. <laughs> 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 so subscribe to us on SoundCloud and iTunes, whatever podcast catcher you use. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, of course. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram on Teal Town USA. Hit us up. Remember, after every single Sharks game, YouTube, Teal Town USA, after dark. Thanks for listening. 63 is in the books. We will see you all next time. 64. Jerk. Who's 64? Jamie McGinn on waivers. <laughs> 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 <laughs>